So this video is going to show you how to deal with an exam question that asks you to prove that triangles are congruent. So here we have a, an example of such a question. This will, requires to prove that triangles are congruent. Let's have a read of it first. In the parallelogram PQRS, the points T and W are on the diagonal PR such that the angle PQT is equal to the angle WSR. So first thing I do with these kind of questions is I try and put the details of the question onto the diagram. First thing we're told is parallel, it's a parallelogram. So I'm going to indicate that by saying the opposite sides are equal. So that's equal to that, that's equal to that. Um, if they mention something like this, you, I would underline it and I would put it onto the diagram because this is going to be involved in the answer to the question. Now the points T and W, so that's T and W, are on the diagonal PR such that the angle PQT is equal to the angle WSR. So the angle PQT would be this one, so from P to Q to T. Now rather than using this, I just put a 1 in here so I can refer to this as the angle 1. It's a little bit easier to do. Um, likewise, the angle WSR, WSR, I put it a 2 here so in future I can refer to this as the angle 2. So let's read on. Prove that the length PT is equal to the length WR. So let's have a look at that. That's P to T. We want to prove that the length of this is equal to the length of WR. Now this seems, at, at the moment, it seems kind of impossible because we don't have the lengths of any sides on this diagram. We do know that these are equal and these are equal, but we don't, we're not told anything about the lengths of these. So how could we possibly prove that they are equal in length? Well, what we have to do is prove that this triangle here is congruent with this triangle. So what that means when you say two triangles are congruent, you're saying that the triangles have exactly the same lengths, sides, and exactly the same angles. So, for example, this side here, PT, would be equal to WR if we could prove that these are congruent. Because they're the corresponding sides of the respective triangles. So, what we need to do is prove that they are congruent. So if you remember, to prove that two triangles are congruent, you don't have to prove that all the sides and all the angles are equal. You just have to prove that three things are equal. And there are four, four different methods. Side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, side, and right angle, hypotenuse, and side. So our job now is to figure out which one of those is the easiest to use. So I would go for angle, side, angle, because we already know that this side is equal to this side. We know that angle 1 is equal to angle 2, that was given in the question. <clears throat> and we know that these two angles are equal, so 3 and 4, because they're alternate angles. Why do I say that? Well, this side here is parallel with this side, because it's a parallelogram. So this must be a transversal going across two parallel sides. And when you have that situation, then the angles across the transversal they're called alternate angles, and they're always equal. So we have everything we need now to prove that the two triangles are congruent. Um, but it's not just good enough to think about it in your head. You really need to put all this information down on the page. So we start off with the first thing that we said is equal. The angle 1 is equal to the angle 2. Why? Because it was given in the question. So this ellipsis here, you can think of that word as the word because. right? So that's just... The reason why we say this, we say 1 is equal to 2 because it was given in the question. Uh, this is actually very important. People, Some people think that this isn't so important. It's actually very important to put this in to show that you know the reason why you're saying this. Uh, likewise, the angle 3 is equal to angle 4 because 3 and 4 are alternate angles. Now You don't need to write the whole sentence. You just need to say alternate angles. Uh, the length PQ is equal to the length TR. Why? Because uh, they're opposite sides of a parallelogram. Now, I probably should have said opposite sides of a parallelogram for this part here. So we've proven that the two triangles are congruent. So we can say, therefore, this is the therefore symbol, the three dots. Triangle PQT is congruent with triangle WSR. This is the congruent symbol and equal to sign with a kind of a wave on top of it. And then uh, we put in brackets the method that we used, so we said it was angle-side-angle. 
Now, because we know that the two trials are congruent, then we can, that allows us to go on and say, therefore, the length PT is equal to the length WR. Why? Because they're corresponding sides of congruent triangles. In other words, PT here is the corresponding side of WR in the other triangle. Now, this is a very common type of question that you can get, uh, where it doesn't actually ask you to prove that the two triangles are congruent, but you need to do that in order to prove that the two sides are equal. So you can often be asked to prove that two sides are equal or two angles are equal. And what they're really trying to get you to do is to prove that the two triangles in question are congruent, which then allows you to say that all the angles and all the sides are equal. As in this question, where we've proven that the two triangles, these two triangles are congruent, which allows us to say that then these two corresponding sides must be equal. P to T is corresponding to WR, WR, that means they must be equal in length. Okay, so let's have a look at part two. Hence or otherwise, show that the triangles PSW and QTR are congruent. So PSW would be this triangle here, P to S to W, and then QTR would be this one. So we have to prove that these two triangles are congruent. So like, just like the last one, we need to prove that three things are equal, and we need to try and figure out what's the best method to use, side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, side, or right angle hypotenuse and side. So for this particular one, I would go for side, 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 and I'll explain why, I'm, why that is. First of all, we know that this side is equal to this because it's a parallelogram. We also know that this side is equal to this side because we already proved that these two triangles are congruent. So they're the corresponding sides of those two congruent triangles. Now the only thing that we're not quite sure about yet is if this side, PW, is equal to this side, TR. But I'll show you shortly how we can prove that they are equal. So let's go ahead and use that method side, side, side. So we need to write down the three things that are equal. We start off with the easy one, PS is equal to QR, so P to S is this one, Q to R is this one, so we said they're equal because it's a parallelogram, opposite sides are equal. Now one thing I forgot to do when I wrote out this answer is to put in the reasons for each um, statement here. So as I said in this one, we need to put in reasons, so I'm going to put them in now. Okay, so the reason is because it's a parallelogram, opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal. Um, now. The next part I'm going to try and do now is to try and prove that the length of this is equal to the length of this. So we start off by saying that PT, the length of PT plus length of TW is equal to PW, so P to T plus T to W equals P to W. Then we, we're going to kind of divide this into two parts in a similar way, so we say the length of WR plus TW, WR plus TW, is equal to t to r, so t to r. Now, if you notice in these two equations, well, the tw's are equal, but also the pt is equal to wr, because remember in the last question we proved that pt is equal to the wr, the length of pt is equal to the length of wr. So, um, for this reason, both of these are equal, that must mean that pw is equal to tr. So we can say, therefore, the length of PW is equal to the length of TR. So we've proven that the length of PW is equal to the length of TR. So, so far we've proven that two sides are equal. And the last thing that, last side that's equal would be QT equals WS. So Q to T equals W to S, again because and these sides belong to the two triangles here that we, well, we already know are congruent. So the corresponding sides must be equal. And that's the reason that we give corresponding sides of congruent triangles. So we've proven that three things are equal. We've proven using the side-side-side method. So therefore we can say the triangle PSW is congruent with the triangle QTR. Okay, so in this question the line segment AB and the line segment CD are chords of the circle as shown and the length AB is equal to the length CD. The chords AD and BC intersect at the point E. Right, so first thing, as usual, we put all this information onto the diagram. 
So we're kind of told that AB is equal to CD. So that's marked. It's already marked for us, so we don't really need to do that. Uh, anything else? Um, so not really. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what the question asks. State why the angle BAD is equal to the angle BCD. So first of all, which angles are they? So we say B to A to D, so it must be this angle. So we just, just label that number one. And then the other one is B to C to D, so we label that number two. So to prove that they are equal, or state why they are equal, so we don't really need to prove it, we just need to stay, state why. And the only way you're gonna know that is if you know your theorems well. Uh, one of the theorems, uh, that you need to learn or it's actually a corollary it states that an angle touching the circumference and standing on the same arc so two angles touching the circumference so these two angles and they're both standing on the same arc the arc what i mean by that is from b to d and you can think of these as the legs of the angle so they're standing on this arc both of these angles are standing on this arc so when that's true, then you know that these angles will always be equal. That's just the theorem. You need to know what the theorem states. Uh, you don't need to prove it or anything. You just need to know that the theorem states that those two angles are equal if those conditions are fulfilled. So what we write down is angle BAD is equal to angle BCD. We could have wrote, actually we should have written angle 1 equals angle 2. Forgot about that. Uh, why? Because the two angles touching the circumference and standing on the same arc. That's the reason that you give. Now you can make it shorter than that if you want. You can just say two angles standing on the same arc. Or angles on the same arc. That would be fine as an answer. So the next question asks us to prove that the triangles BAE and DCE are congruent. So... Which triangles are we talking about? BAE would be this one, and then DCE would be this one. So we have to prove that these two are congruent. So as usual, we're looking for three things that are most obviously equal. So first of all, we see that these sides are equal. We know that these two angles are equal. And for the same reason, these two angles are equal, because they're touching the circumference and standing on the same arc, A to C. So there, those two angles are equal, the two sides are equal, these two angles are equal. So we can use the method angle side angle to prove that these are congruent. So we say angle 1 is equal to angle 2, reason standing on the same arc. Angle 3 is equal to angle 4, reason standing on the same arc. And then the length AB is equal to length CD because it's given in the question. Therefore, we can say that the triangle BAE is congruent with the triangle DCE. And the method we use was... And this is actually a mistake. It should have been angle side angle. Okay, so we've proven that these two triangles are congruent. Let's move on to the last question. It asks us to prove that the length of AD is equal to the length of BC. So the length of AD is equal to the length of BC. Now, usually these questions follow on from the previous questions. So we know from the previous question, for example, that the corresponding sides would be equal. So... The length of this would be equal to the length of this, and also the length of this side would be equal to the length of this side. So if we could kind of add those together, we would get the length of both sides. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to write down that the length AE is equal to the length CE for the reason corresponding sides. So this is equal to this because they're corresponding. Likewise, the length of ED is equal to the length of EB. Again, because they're corresponding sides, so this and this are equal. And so what we can do is we can add these two equations. We can add this to this to get AE plus ED, which is literally all of this line, so AE plus ED. And we add this to this, we get CE plus EB. Again, this is the whole line, C to B. So we can say, therefore, the length of AD is equal to the length of CB, and that's what we're asked to, to prove. So we can write the, the letters QED if you want. Uh, this What that means is just basically we've proven what we're at, we've been asked to demonstrate. If you like these videos, please consider subscribing to my channel. I hope to upload more videos before the exam this week and we'll definitely be doing videos on the Leaving Cert next year. 
So subscribe and make sure not to miss out on those videos. Thank you.